here we are. We are on episode number three of our Q&A. Today we have Coach Robbo. He's gonna be helping us out. He's our nutrition coach. He, uh, he knows his stuff. Okay, everyone. As we're gonna be speaking about nutrition today, <laughs> swell up, there you go. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple of things that we need to speak about first. Is the diet, there are so many variables. Everyone is gonna be different. Everyone's gonna respond differently to uh, the foods that you, you eat. So um, before we start, always try and remember that throughout this entire video. Our first question, uh, what is the best pre-workout meal or pre-workout breakfast? First off, make sure you have a pre-workout breakfast. Uh, a lot of times we see guys in here and they are piling in. You ask them what they've had, and it's oh, I had a banana, I've had a cup of coffee, and then they wonder why their performance is lacking. So, get yourself into a routine first of all of making sure that you eat. Uh, once you've got yourself into a routine of that, then we can sort of look at what you should be eating. Pre, pre workout, if your goal is um, body fat loss, in my opinion, what you want to be doing is looking at loading up on sort of proteins and fats. Um, and then looking at post-workout, which I think we'll come on to in a minute, that's when you're going to load up on your, your carbohydrates at that point. Now, the fats and the protein that you're going to take on board, clearly we want them to be good proteins, good fats, so we want lean meats, not sausages, not bacon, not sort of processed meats. We want steak, chicken, fish. Um, you've got to figure out what you want to eat first prior to it and how long you need to eat that prior to your workout. I know that I can have steak and eggs and train within an hour. Um, other people, it's not gonna work. All right, so that's kind of an insight into the first question. Uh, Robert, how would the, the breakfast change, or why would the breakfast change? Um, if you're training with other people and training myself at different events, whether it be P Company, whether it be 10Ks, marathons, that stuff, where you're gonna be training for longer and requiring a bigger output, your concern isn't sort of lowering body fat, but it's more based around performance, then you want to make sure you're fueled for that to give the best performance you can. So for those kind of training sessions, still get your proteins on board, still get your fats on board, but you're going to want to up your carbohydrate content so that that's then going to fuel you through your workout and not sort of eat into sort of the muscle mass, unless you want to lose muscle mass, depending on weight and goals. So if you're running a marathon, Carrying 85 kilos to 100 kilos of muscle mass for that distance not ideal. So then you may want to reduce down. So again, diet and eating habits will change a little bit there. What are your goals? We are now going to go on to the post-workout meal and how that's going to change depending on what your goals are again. Go back to rule one. Make sure you have a post-workout meal. Make sure it's a meal. Don't rely on protein shakes, recovery drinks and all of that. They're great, but it's not a meal, it's not real food. Your body wants yeah. real food. If you know you're gonna be leaving the box and go straight back to work and you're not gonna to get to eat for two or three hours, then a protein shake with some uh, carbohydrates in, so what I would mix in with mine might be uh, an avocado, get that blended up, or I'd put in some oats, get that blended yeah. up. That's, that's, that's great if you're going back to work. If you're going home and you're about to eat within the next hour, hour and a half, get real food on board. Get steak, chicken, fish, all the good stuff. Look at good, clean carbohydrates. Make sure we're getting your fats on board. That way you don't need to be spending all your money on post-workout shakes, which at the end of the day, although it's protein, it's still a processed form. Yeah. We are going on to how to maximize recovery after a class or after a workout. You want gains? Do you want to add gains? <laughs> what you do in the gym is just a fraction of what you want to see. It comes down to nutrition and the key thing, recovery. Uh, Coach Brendan went through it last week and we all sort of sing off the same hymn sheet here. Sleep. Get enough sleep. This is the biggest one for me that I fail on. By the time I get out of here and get my head down, it's about 11, half 11 at night. And then I've got my kids waking me up somewhere between half past four and quarter past five. If I'm lucky, six. So I don't get the maximum amount of sleep that would be ideal. Ideally, you want to be getting somewhere between seven and a half to nine hours worth of sleep. And it is key for your recovery. 
Once you get your sleep squared away, you then want to be looking, making sure you've got your nutrition squared away. If you haven't dealt with your pre-workout meal, your post-workout meal, you're making sure that you're eating breakfast, i.e. breaking the fast, you're not setting yourself up to recover. You know, a lot of us talk about um, there is no such thing as overtraining. It's just uh, under under-recovery, under recovery and, and, and neglecting your nutrition. If you get all of that squared away, you should be overtraining. Question number four. How should my diet change uh, when I'm going for a 10K run compared to when I want to max out on my deadlift? What are the differences that should happen with regards to my training, with regards to my diet? Again, like all things, it's gonna depend on is your 10K run just built into your programming? On a sort of cycle, okay, yesterday I've done max effort back squats, today I've got to do a max effort 10K. Or are you training to get the best 10K run, uh, race time? You've got an event coming up and you want to smash that time. And again, you want to hit a PR within six weeks on your deadlift or your bench. You're going to focus just on that. If you're focusing just on those, don't get the two mixed up. Focus just on strength for that period of time. Focus just on conditioning. You're still going to add a little bit of strength conditioning in, but the main basis of your uh, training cycle will be to stick to your goal. So if we're looking at 10K or a marathon or a half marathon or anything like that where you're going to be running for an excess of 30, 40 minutes, then you want to make sure your body is fueled for that. Carbohydrates is the easiest source for that. You want to be looking at a good source of uh, carbohydrates you know that you can process. For me, it's not paleo, I like oats. I know that I can have oats prior to doing a 10 mile tab about an hour before and it will fuel me and I don't have any dramas with it. Some people prefer sweet potatoes, rice. You've got to figure out what works for you. I can't sit here and go, you should eat this beforehand and it causes you uh, to be sick and ill. You've got to figure that out. So, With regard to races, on that, whatever you're doing, whatever you're eating, whatever you plan to do with your race, ensure that you're eating the same thing building up. Don't on race day suddenly change. Think, oh, I'll try it, bang in this. Let's take three scoops of pre-workout. Three scoops of pre-workout, <laughs> and oh, we've seen that before. before. Yeah. Um, and what about uh, strength deadlift? Yeah. Strength, we want to make sure we're, we're breaking down muscle fibers here. Up your protein intake. You still want to keep your carbohydrates up to fuel you through that sort of workout, but you want to be keeping your sort of uh, proteins and your fats up. Probably less less carbohydrates than you would if you're aiming for a 10 k or half marathon, etc. All right, we are on to the final question. And uh, the final question is, what are the recommended supplements that I should take? All of them. All of them. All of them. Any okay. supplement you can take. Recommended supplements. Go back, right back to the first thing on here. Make sure your nutrition is squared away. Okay, then from there, then we need to be looking at things. So if you're supplementing protein with proteins, you've got to look at the reason why. Are you doing it because you're going straight back to work? Fine. Are you doing it because you're a bit lazy and you can't bother to cook and prep stuff? Are you doing it just to look cool? Yeah, screw that up. <laughs> you know, eat real meat. You know, I've got three kids and I'm still able to prep food. A lot of the guys in here haven't got that uh, commitment. Prep food. You're spending all your time in here working really hard make that work by prepping your food that's the key thing so if we then have to look at supplements there's quite a few different supplements out there on the market we've got to look at what you're lacking uh, one of the things i lack in my diet i don't eat enough uh, oily fish so i supplement with omega 3 this works really well for me it has made me make sure i eat more fish but still not eating enough let's face it i'd rather have steak than fish that's just me other people would rather eat fish than steak now we'd be uh, screw. Sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. <laughs> it's true. Steak. Yeah. The steak also eats the grass, eats the green stuff. You're getting so much green stuff. Done. Salad. Done. Um, one of the supplements I, I tend to use, especially when we're looking at strength cycles and even conditioning cycles, creatine. Um, you may want to look, uh, consider magnesium. I uh, mentioned earlier about my sleep patterns at the moment. Not been, not been great, so I've been supplementing with uh, some magnesium. I've been having some awesome dreams and sleeping really well. Um, what other ones do we supplement with? Uh, say vitamin C. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is a great one, especially out here. It's a great one for your immune system. Out here we, we go from an air-conditioned building to an air-conditioned car to an air-conditioned lift. 
and that air conditioning is spreading so many other germs around. Loading up on vitamin C is essential. It's going to help boost your immune system uh, to allow you to keep training. We're putting our bodies under quite a lot of stress. So I load up on vitamin C. Okay, everyone, that concludes the video. We are finished. Uh, thank you very much to Robo for helping us out. Uh, all his details, if you want to speak to him, contact him about nutrition, they'll all be kind of down here in the description. Uh, he'll have his Instagram and his email address there. Once again, thanks. Let me know what you think of the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, whatever that, all of that fun stuff. Do all of it, and I will uh, see you in the next one. See you. Cheers, guys. <laughs> right. Uh, do a leg run. Do two leg runs. Do two leg runs on the leg. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, yeah. Pop a few omega 3 pills. Pop a few pills. Pop a few pills. Okay.